Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about sharing permissions that revolve around sharing folders in Google Drive. If you just want a simple way to share folders, you can just select the folder and then click the share icon in the menu to share that particular folder. It will give you a pop-up that asks for you to give the email address of the user you would like to share the folder with. Ideally, a Gmail address will work best, and then you can choose to give them edit or view permissions. There's also a get shareable link at the top right. I suggest you avoid that for now. You can add a note and then you can share. That document will then have a person icon inside that folder to indicate that it's shared. In the recipient's email, they will get an email indicating that you have shared that document with them. They can click on the link and then they will see the web view of your folder that you've shared with them. That web view doesn't really look too integrated into Google Drive. They can choose to add to Drive at the top right corner. They do not have to click this to see it in their Google Drive, but this will place it in their My Drive folder. Back in Gmail, we could also choose to go to the App Launcher and in the App Launcher, click on the Drive icon to open up Google Drive. Here, the recipient will be able to see the folder in their My Drive because they've already clicked the Add to My Drive in the web view. If they didn't click on the Add to My Drive, they can go to the Shared With Me section and it will be listed in that section near the top where that particular folder will be. And then they can move it to their drive from that location. So those are just a couple locations where they can get to their Google Drive folder and then they can go ahead and open it and edit the files or view them as necessary. However, I will warn you that if this is the only information, you may get situations where suddenly you might have files disappearing from your folder and you don't know what to do. So this is where we want to talk about why, what exactly a Google folder is similar to. And with that, I can relate it best to a network drive on a computer. The difficulty with relating it to a network drive, though, is that oftentimes the IT takes care of it. We just enter our login information, and then when we log in, a private network drive is mapped to us, as well as often a public one that's part of the office. We don't have to worry about any of this. IT takes care of it. However, with the Google Drive folder, we have to carry about the file permissions, and that's where we have to find out how those file permissions work when we share these Google Drive folders. So with that, there's three main points, starting with the first one, that sharing permissions cascade to each file within a folder. So that means for a given Google Drive folder, the permissions will flow into all subfolders and subfiles, like a waterfall in water dropping off a waterfall. So it cascades into those folders. Here in TNS user one, I've shared just the folder with TNS user two, and when we just saw in the previous example, all I did was share the documents folder. I didn't care about any of the files inside, but when I look at any individual file inside, it already has the shared permission exactly like the folder. From there, we can go to the next point where granting can edit access to the folder it means that editors can change what files are added and removed from the folder. That means that if I share this particular folder with a group of people, so here it's shared with TNS users 02, 05, and 04. So having them all shared with can edit means that they can choose what files appear in this particular folder. So there's first file three, four, five. I'm adjusting my screen so we can see the different users all in this one screen. And if I go to TNS user 02 and go ahead and remove a particular file from this folder, it will then subsequently be removed from every single person's view and no one will have access to that particular file except for the original user TNS user 01. So that was TNS user 02 removing the file. They cannot delete it because it is TNS user 01's. TNS 
user 04 just went ahead and moved a file out, they do get this pop-up that warns them that no one else will see this file, but you never know, they might hit that OK anyways, and then that file will again subsequently be removed from everyone else's folder. When this happens, uh, TNS user 04 can still see it in whatever folder they moved it to. So that's not an issue for TNS user 04. However, because it's been moved out of the folder that is given permissions to everyone else, then the cascading permissions no longer happens, and then the only users that see this particular file is TNS user 04 and then TNS user 01, the owner of the file. So then TNS user 02 and 05 will be confused because they don't know what happened to these two particular files. What is even more confusing is that the original owner, TNS user 01, won't see those files in that folder anymore either. Even strangers in their my drive, they won't be able to find that file anywhere. So that means that in order for the original owner to find those files, they have to search for it. So here I search for file 3 and then I can add it to my drive again in the menu and I can choose where it goes. So I'm going to put it back in the documents folder and I'd have to do this again for file 4. So this means that these files could disappear also from the owner as well as from the people that this file has been shared with. This is why sharing folders with can edit can be quite dangerous. Now all those files are back into the correct folder and this folder being shared with everyone else, they will now see those subsequent files back into the correct folder. The third thing is that file permissions trump folder permissions unless the folder permissions grant editing privileges. Note that individual file privileges can be changed after the fact once the folder privileges have been established. To begin, if I go into this particular documents folder and I start granting permissions to each individual file. So here I'm going to first give file 3 to TNS user 02 with can view and then I'm going to go ahead and send that. And then I'm going to go ahead and in file 4 grant permissions to TNS user 02 with can comment. Here it still has the TNS user 04 because of that moving example from before. So here I'm just going to say can comment, go ahead and hit send. And then finally with file 5, I'm going to go ahead and give it can edit permissions to once again TNS user 02. Now that all that is done, what I want to do is go back up one level so that I can see the my drive and the documents folder. There I'm now going to share the entire contents of this folder once again to TNS user 02 and this time I'm going to share it as only can view so they can only see whatever files are in there. So I've gone ahead and shared it and now in TNS user 02's view they can see the documents folder but when I go into it if I go ahead and try to share file 3 it's going to say don't have permissions because I can only view this file which makes sense because the file 3 was given view and the folder was given view. Same thing with file 4, it was given can comment so it can't share, but file 5 can share because the individual file was already given edit access despite the folder granting can view. So the folder permission didn't change that can view or can edit for file 5. However, if I then go back to the documents folder in TNS user 01 and change everything to can edit in the folder, so the folder itself, I've changed the can edit, it cascades down to all the other files. So now file 3, if I try to share it, I will be able to share it because the editing privileges cascaded down, overwrote the can view and can comment for file 3 and file 4. Furthermore, in this situation, now they will be able to also remove and add files to this particular folder. So that is where we can have the file permissions be, be superseded by the folder permissions if it's can edit. Now that this particular 
folders shared as can edit, I can go in afterwards and change individual file permissions to a lower permission level as needed. So here I'm going to switch it to can view, and then in file four, I can switch it back into can comment. So even though the folder itself is can edit, because I've switched these files after sharing the folder, these permissions will now supersede. One thing to note is that this is a little bit backwards. Quite frequently, you would want to give the folder permissions with less permissions, with individual files having more permissions. So it's easier to then go ahead and put uh, a lot of editing privileges on individual files, but share the folder as can view so that they can't actually choose to add or accidentally remove files from that particular folder. In summary, we just want to go through those three points. So sharing permissions cascade to each file within a folder when that folder is shared. Granting can edit access to a folder means that editors can change which files are added and removed within that folder. So files can disappear and file permissions trump folder permissions unless the folder permissions grant editing privileges. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. We will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.